Begin with the investigation, secret tape recordings, and what Pilot Flying J management knew. Five on your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joins us with how this case unfolded. Well, Jimmy Haslam has not been charged with any crime and has consistently denied wrongdoing. But this is a sworn statement from a lead FBI agent on the case. It's 120 pages long, and it convinced a federal judge there's probable cause to suspect criminal activity by some pilot employees. It also reveals a lot about how the FBI investigation first began last April 15th. In Knoxville, it was a picture-perfect day at Pilot Flying J headquarters a Monday morning at the nation's largest truck stop operator. But just two miles away at FBI headquarters, agents were suiting up for a four and a half minute ride in total secrecy. Even the chief of police of the city of Knoxville did not know where they were going. Dennis Francis is a Knoxville criminal defense attorney with connections. Turn off your radios, turn off your cell phones, turn off your in-car stuff. Meet us at a rally point, we're gonna go, and they sat there and worked the perimeter. Once inside, FBI agents knew exactly where they were going. They headed straight to the top floor, including the front office of pilot CEO, Jimmy Hassel. But I suspicion that these search warrants may not be the beginning of this investigation. These search warrants may be the end of the government's investigation. In fact, it all began two full years before, with a tip. An extensive review of FBI search warrants and sworn statements reveal how the criminal probe into Haslam and his company unfolded. May 4th, 2011, the tipster told the FBI about alleged fraudulent activity by certain pilot employees. Just weeks later, in June, the FBI's tipster began secretly recording someone inside the company, a regional sales director who knew even more. In the following months, that inside source identified key players inside pilot headquarters in Knoxville, including the company's vice president plus its national sales director, and claimed both were fraudulently withholding fuel rebates from truckers. I have no idea. This is very new to me, okay? The day after the raid... Here again, it was just 24 hours that they came in and so you it's like getting knocked down you got to get back up and then you got to right yourself Jimmy Haslam spoke out for the first time well you know we're as you guys know we're on a tight ship here and so we immediately have begun our internal investigation but the ship was in danger by the fall of 2012 the FBI had secured a third source this time a pilot sales manager who had already left the company partly she said because of what she claimed she saw. On October 2nd, FBI agents made an offer she couldn't refuse. Castigar, they come in, they take a statement from you, uh, you swear that the stuff in there is true, they say, we're not gonna use this against you unless and until you take the witness stand and you testify differently. And it worked. Obviously, she cooperated to the extent of giving them an affidavit that they use, uh, giving them information that they used to uh, get a federal judge to sign off on a search warrant, multiple search warrants, as a matter of fact. According to FBI records, she described even more pilot employees at headquarters allegedly taking part in the fraud. Just two days later, October 4th, 2012, the FBI moved into high gear. For the first time, agents approached that inside source, the regional sales director they've been secretly recording by now for more than a full year. He agreed to work undercover inside Pilot itself. And for the next six months, dinners, training sessions, even meetings inside Pilot headquarters were all caught on tape detailing the alleged fraud. The FBI had hit the jackpot and hit a nerve with Jimmy Haslam. So to have this type of incident happen here at Pilot Flying J is tough. It's really tough. It's rocked us back. I, I won't tell you any differently. It was now four days after the raid. Somebody asked me today if I was going to step down as president, and I thought to myself, well, why would I do that? Um, candidly. Um, I haven't done anything wrong.